making up a little external bell siphon to take the flow from two small flood and drain beds today. Thought I'd bring you along and show you how I'm putting it all together. So here you go folks, this is a bit of a look at the system. Uh, what we've got here are basically two flood and drain beds that are connected via pipework underneath to a control box that has a bell siphon in it. Uh, now this isn't exactly how I'll be setting mine up. This is just to give you folks out there a little bit of a look at um, one way you could do it I suppose, definitely not the only way. Now I did have a few people suggest that I just whack an external bell siphon on these guys on each bed. Um, what I'm trying to do here is connect a number of beds to a single bell siphon unit. Uh, basically to cut down the amount of um, plumbing and pipe work we have in the system in one respect and also to just to make the whole thing look a little bit uh, more pleasant on the eye. I did think about uh, popping the bucket in between the two beds and then having a pipe from either side of the bucket enter into the bell siphon. The reason I haven't set it up that way is because with the layout of our aquaponic system it would be easier to have the bell siphon right next to the sump tank um, which would be right there if we were down the back. So I decided that I'd have the beds running in series. So these beds here, uh, they, they will be making it into our system, but I won't be using this little external bell siphon. You'll have to um, tune in for next week's clip to see what I'm going to do there. And I'm also going to be posting a little bit of a clip on my take on the external PVC bell siphon just for a single bed. So uh, for the time being though, if you want to check out Jerry's in the description below, he's made up a beautiful little siphon that he pops onto the um, outside of his beds using the same sort of idea that I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm just going to be mucking around with this one here, which is the third bed that will be connected to the other two uh, once I set it up to the system and plan it out with Ginger. But as to how this one is plumbed together, um, it is pretty basic. What I've decided to use are uni seals, uh, not only because I sell them, but because they are a lot cheaper than bulkhead fittings, and they're pretty much all just a single part. If I was going to use bulkhead fittings in here, I'd need to use a threaded fitting on top and a threaded fitting below for the type of bulkheads that we get here in Australia. I know there are different ones around the world. So that means I'd probably end up um, spending $30, $40 um, just on the bulkhead fittings themselves. Actually, even more when you consider the um, little control bucket there. So I just opted to go for these uni seals. Now, with the uni seals, I went for the two inch pressure, mainly because that's what the majority of my offcuts and fittings are. So what I've done is I've cut up a little bit of pipe work. This is the drain pipe for the third bed. Um, as you can see, we've got some holes drilled around the base there. That's pretty much all the line where it'll be pushed down to the uni seal and the pipe work can be um, connected underneath the bed to this section. Uh, what I did for these slits here was basically use a drop saw, mainly because it's a lot quicker than using a drill. And I've done a number of them up there and just an end cap with some holes drilled in it. And that's pretty much all what will be taking the water out of the little grow bed itself. Down here, uh, what I have done is made a little bit of a chamfer on the base of the pipe just to make it easier to push through the uni seal. Uh, for this one here, all I pretty much all did was grab my utility knife and just try and slice out little sections just to take that corner off. And I tell you what, it does make it a lot easier to push through the uni seals. I also use a little bit of um, soap just around the edge there and a little bit of water just to help lubricate it and push it through. So that's pretty much all, all I did for these guys. Measurement wise though, I mean, it depends on the height of your bed as to what you're going to use. And I had to make um, an allowance for a little uh, pipe or bar on the frame itself that I had to get down below. So everyone's build will be different in that respect. Now, as I said, I used the 50 mil pressure uni seals there, and I think it was a 64 millimeter hole saw that I needed. Um, just with the hole saws, do remember that it does pay to start off the drill forward with your pilot hole, and then switch it into reverse to drill your holes through. And it just makes the cut so much cleaner and less chance of the teeth grabbing and ripping the plastic. After the hole was cut, I went around the edges with a deburring tool just to get rid of any of the burrs that were left on there. They can cause a problem um, making a really nice snug seal with the uni seals, so I like to get rid of them, make them all nice and clean. And from there, all I did was push the pipes down through into the uni seals, just down to the holes in the base of the standpipe there. And that gave us a nice section underneath the bed here for these little contraptions that I've made up. Now, what I've done is I've used two 45 degree elbows and I've glued them together previously. They've actually come from our old fish farm build. Um, they're bits and pieces from that. 
So I've just reused them here. You could use a 90 degree elbow if you wanted to, but I have found that having this double 45 um, to make up a 90 degree just does make water flow a little bit more smoothly through the system. Thank you very much to Mr. Paul Van for pointing that one out. So that's pretty much all how I am joining these two barrels. Now I could run the Uniseal through the side of the barrel, but I would have to come up a little bit. And what that means is the top of the pipe would be there, which means that I, the barrel would hold a lot more water than it does when it drains at the moment. So it's pretty much well the reason why I decided to go underneath. And yeah, I found that these barrels do drain really well. In fact, it's just about to um, empty now, so we'll be able to suss that out in a tick. Uh, down on this end here though, we'll have a look here first. Just down on this blue barrel, I've pretty much all done the same thing. The pipe comes out, we've got another twin 45s connected in, and then it goes up to the base of the control bucket that has the bell siphon in it, with a 50 mil uni seal on one side and a 25 mil on the other side going from the inside out. So it's a pretty basic little design and I found it works really well. I mean, if you wanted to, you could have a crack at these 90 degrees and see how they'd go for you. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty much all just using what I have on hand at the moment. So what we'll do is we'll just have a look at the siphon braking here. And just to show you the amount of water that's coming through, it's actually pretty even between the two barrels. There's a little bit more in the yellow one and the blue one goes down fairly low. We'll just take the lid off this siphon and you can see the water's coming through you know, the single inlet and then out through the bell there and we should have a burp fairly soon. So there we go, the bell's broken. And just to show you, that tote's almost overflowing. Uh, what I had to do was um, basically make a nice short uh, standpipe in there because I just don't have enough volume to take all the water from this whole, for the two whole beds. So that's why this one's a little bit low. But it's similar to the rest of my bell siphon designs. The standpipe is basically a, I'm just pulling out. So for the standpipe arrangement, I've got a one inch uni seal in there with a one inch section of pipe coming through. And I've got two 25 to 20 mil or one to three quarter inch reducers on there. One so it can take the pipe that's going through the uni seal and the other so it allows a greater volume of water to enter over the top to um, in help initiate the siphon to begin with. So that's why I've got this little arrangement in here. And like I said, I mean, this tote is just a little bit too small uh, for the purpose I'm using it for. So that's why I don't have this um, stand pipe at its full height. It could probably come up another 13 centimeters or just over five inches, I think. So um, yeah, it's for the purpose though to show you folks it's working well. So a pretty easy jobby to put together really. Uh, don't forget that this isn't what's going into our system. I'll show you where it's going in a minute. Um, I do want to add this other little bed in, but I just want to muck around with that little external siphon first just to show you my take on that. And don't forget to um, have a look at Jerry's in the description below. Um, yeah, if you want to pop in, you know, your pipe through the um, side walls there, I mean, it'll work just as well. The same sort of cuts and slits and holes drilled in it. Um, I just like the look of this being nice and clean. Uh, there's nothing above the beds there that you can see. It's all down below and out of the way. So I can tell you what too, trying to push two barrels together uh, with a uniseal is a lot of fun. We might just take a bit of a wander down to the aquaponics and I'll show you where this is going to end up. So these barrels are going way over the back of the system, down over here where they were, where you saw them last time. The reason I'm popping them down here is because I want to plant ginger in them and it does like a nice um, shady spot, so they should do well here. The third barrel will be squeezed in on the end there and it will run directly down into the sump and I already have the um, inline that will feed the barrels, they're ready to go. So. That's pretty much all where it's going to end up on the system once she's all finished. As I said before, there's a few different ways you can hook these little siphons up externally. So if you want to come along next weekend, you'll see the ginger, uh, hopefully, uh, set up here uh, with the three barrels hooked together. And I'll try and knock together that small little clip on the little PVC external siphon. Well, uh, if you want to come along or you want a reminder, you just need to click on that little subscribe button down there and you'll be sent an email notification when those clips are uploaded and you can come along and check them out. Um, just at the end of this clip as well, I'm going to put a little um, card section up for you folks on PC, and you can um, click on the little buttons there around the different clips, and you can suss out other aquaponic builds that we've done with this system or one of the old uh, systems if you're interested. So 
I do hope you enjoyed the clip. Just quickly too, I almost forgot, I'm running a competition at the moment. What you need to do is check out that video there. It's basically guessing the weight of Grandma Beetroot. All the um, details on how to enter are in that clip and in its description. And the entries do need to be in by next Wednesday though, the 9th of November 2016. So suss it out if you're interested. If you do guess the correct weight, you will be getting a $25 US of course gift voucher to Root and Ramble. They're the folks who made this awesome aquaponics grow different t-shirt. So go suss it out if you're interested in entering. You've got to be in it to win it. I do hope that you folks that have enjoyed the clip though and maybe got an idea or two out of it that you can use in your own system. I also hope that your gardens are booming and your aquaponics as well and I will catch you next weekend for another clip. Cheers folks, have a great one. Ah, oh, come on fella. Just had a bee rescue. She decided to um, go for a bit of a dip in the barrel there.